Hey folks, um, thought we'd uh, start doing some uh, demo videos for you on the tools that we carry. Uh, if there are any that you'd like to see um, demonstrated, please give us a shout, um, drop us an email, or send us an Insta DM, whatever you like. So the first up today that we're going to talk about is the long bent gouge. Um, I thought I'd show you a couple of things out here before I take them into the workshop um, to give you an up-close view on using it on a spoon blank. First thing I would say is that make sure you keep your edges protected. So my personal favourite is a bit of masking tape or this uh, recycled brown paper tape that I use. Um, I just wipe the thing, wipe the tool down with a bit of oil before putting it away. Strip of up over the back and back down the other side. Keeps it nicely sealed. Keeps the oil on there. Keeps the rust down and stops edges from being against each other. Uh, another option is cardboard cardboard tube. At least that will stop it from banging against any other tools. Um, leather sheaths, whatever you like. Just don't let them bang against each other. The other thing I'd say is that uh, with these, um, so these particular gouges, you can see that it has a rounded timber end. Um, and what that tells you is that this gouge is not designed to be hit. Um, it's purely to be used by hand, no mallets. If you start hitting the back of this with a mallet, you'll probably split the handle. Um, the way you know one that is designed to be struck, it has a ferrule on the back. That's that um, copper bit there. Same as what you see up here down there. That stops the timber from splitting from impact. So, yep. Um, so that's the long bent gouge. I'll take you inside now and show you how to use it. So before we start using the gouge, I'll just give you a couple of quick um, illustrations on what direction to use the gouge in. So you want to go across the grain as much as possible, but obviously on the ends you have the rounds. So still go across the grain, but you can go in a sweeping action and same with around here. So you can see that I've drawn in my rim for my bowl. Um, we'll call that the no-go zone. We don't want to touch this area at the moment. You can finesse that later um, with a hook knife. Um, and some people will find it's easier to start from the middle and go that way. And then you can switch it around and go back the other way. And same with on the ends, you can go either way. Um, so to secure it down, you can use, I'm going to take the camera back a bit. You can use something like an F-clamp. You could also use a spoon mule um, to hold it in place. You could even use a vise, but my suggestion with a vise is if you're going to do that, um, make yourself up some timber um, jaws to go around the vise. So you could use something like this, like two bits of timber. That could be one side of your vise. That way you're going to protect the edge of your tool. So join them together. They sit into your vise and then you can hold your spoon in there like that within the vise. Um, the reason for that is just to protect the edge of your tool, uh, of your gouge from hitting your vise and damaging it because then you lose hours of carving to having to fix up your tool. All right, so using an F-clamp, we can just clamp it to the table. And we're ready to go. Um, now, the tool itself is super sharp. So we want to let the tool do the work. 
So don't be tempted to get in there and there shouldn't be any grunt work involved. It's, it's all the tool doing the work. So I'm catching an edge and letting the tool do the work. So what's happening here is the edge is catching and I'm levering it and I'll take the camera back away from me in a sec to show you what the rest of my body is doing. Um, but at the moment, you can see we're just taking off really fine shavings. And it's, so when that edge catches, it's levering off the back here and following itself through the wood. So levering off there and my shoulder is actually comes up high and I'll take the camera back in a sec to show that. The other thing is that with each cut, you create a valley and a peak. If you aim for those peaks, they're a lot easier to carve, uh, a lot easier to take out because you're not trying to take as much of the cutting edge through the timber. So, valley, peak. The other thing I should say is I've got a pinch grip happening here, which this is great for teaching um, people to use a gouge. It gets all fingers, hands, appendages out of the way because you're behind, you're back here. Um, your hand's there, your other hand's on the handle. Okay, now I'm going to show you a long range shot so you can see what's going on with my body. Okay, so when we're using the gouge, held in your dominant hand is the handle. Your non-dominant hand is in the pinch grip. And you'll notice that my shoulder comes up. Or my elbow, whatever you prefer. But it's a levering action. There's no grunt involved. It's a very easy, you can rest your middle finger along the edge if you like. But if you're push, if you're having to push through, it works, but it's unnecessary. Um, I quite often teach, say, a group of six or eight people, and we'll, leave, we'll all be around the table, and all you can hear is the sound of the gouges going through the timber as everyone concentrates. So I showed you going straight across. And then to go around, it's a sweeping action. This is she oak, it's quite a hard timber. And you can see I'm still, there's no effort required. Sweep round or straight across. And after a while, you can see I sort of go from about two thirds across, take it out, swing it around. other way. One thing I'll say about the gouge and a hook knife, it's easy to get carried away. So Pay attention to how much material you are removing. Check the thickness from time to time. Don't get carried away or you'll pop out the other side.
Thank <laughs> you.